So, it's Chris. I've been putting this one off. I'll be, be honest with you. Let's talk ISS Vanguard. Awaken Realms' biggest, most latest project. Arguably the most hype project that they have had to date. Arguably also the most divisive that they have had to date. Despite the fact that we actually have probably the most information we have had on any one of their games to this point. With multiple prototypes, playthroughs, explanations. It's doing well, obviously. It's raising seven figures. By the time this is posted, they will probably be near three million US dollars. So that is, by all accounts, a very successful campaign. Up until the timing of this video, I really haven't looked at the page. I've been a backer since day one, but all I literally did was back it and leave. This is going to be my reaction to checking things out. This is not going to be prepared in advance. Otherwise, I just don't feel like you get the genuine emotion always. So I want to give you as much honesty as I can in my initial reaction to what's out there. Now, first up, I want to say this is obviously on GameFound, their new platform. Now, let's talk for a second. Let's take a step back and let's go back to Awaken Realms' history. So let's take a look at Awaken Realms here a second. And let's take a look at nine of their last 11 Kickstarter projects, all varying between the lowest at about 56 or 3,600 backers on the original The Edge, Dawnfall, and 5,600 on the sequel, the 1.6 version, up until almost 42,000 on... Nemesis Lockdown, their most recent one. Why are we talking about this and why are we going to be comparing it? Because it's important to see sort of, even though this may be their most hyped, sort of goes to the comment about and potentially the most divisive because you would ex sometimes expect the hype to correlate in a somewhat linear fashion to the amount raised. It's not always linear, but it definitely plays a part in terms of a lot of Kickstarters. That is the basis for why crowdfunding has sort of hit its mark in our community is because there is so much hype prior to and during these campaigns. Where also does it rank in terms of money raised? Now, why is money raised sometimes a better indicator than backers? Because all of these pledges are varying degrees of dollars that isn't always apples to apples and oranges to oranges. So total may reflect a little bit differently than just number of backers. Let's take a look at the actual page. Now, this is my first time actually digging into this page. So the fact that I know they're at 2.7 is just because I looked at it just before literally starting this video. So I'll tell you right now, straight up, I have been getting the emails and I will say I do not like this feature and I like the Kickstarter feature already more than GameFound in the sense that all it does is send you an email saying that there's an update and it's making you go to their website in order to read the update. Why can't you just send me the update in text when I'm checking my email? It's a little thing, but I'm not sure why you have to do it that way. And maybe there's some logistic that I'm missing, but it's annoying. It's, it's a little irritating. Or is it a future feature that you're using now that you're hoping that if I go to the website to view the update, it'll get me to other projects and back it that way? Either way, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's a little bit intrusive. I, I don't need to go to the website every time to check the page every time. It would be nice to just have the text in my email. And if I want to go there and comment and do something else, I can, but you don't force me to. So I'll tell you right now that I'm not a fan of that. So let's take a look. So I can already see next stretch goal to unlock nine days left in the campaign. It's day 13 is going to be the next stretch goal. And so they have clearly gone more of the we're going to unlock based on days rather than purely uh, money, which part of me likes, part of me doesn't like. I like the transparency because I really am starting to get turned off by a lot of fake stretch goals from a lot of companies. Companies that include um, basic upgrades to components as stretch goals or uh, glossy shine on the box as a stretch goal. Um, you know, come on, you're either going to do that or you're not. I really don't think an extra $100,000 is going to be the decision on whether or not you're going to do that. You've already thought about it and planned about it in the campaign and, and you've already probably decided. Same thing with the components. You've already decided what you're going to do at, you know, the campaign level and the Kickstarter for 95% of these campaigns. So especially the larger ones, I do not like seeing those thrown in because they feel like they're almost filler. 
they just don't seem to add a whole lot to them and they just seem a little disingenuous. So that's the positive of the day unlocks, meaning you can do the goals of what you want. At the same time, the unlocks, you know, are, are just that. This is all stuff to create hype. And so at least sometimes with the funding, you can tell that, you know, some games truly do not add that if it doesn't hit the funding, like Chip Theory Games. If they don't hit it, it doesn't get added. Some of these smaller games, if it doesn't hit that level, they just can't afford to add it. So these bigger companies as well, again, you are already planning on including this. And so it's more just to gain hype rather than to actually be something that we've unlocked. We have made it to day 13 of a campaign that was already 100% funded in, what, three minutes and 15 seconds? So, so what is there? How does extending the campaign an extra day unlock anything? It really doesn't. That's the downside of those stretch goals. So let's take a look here. I like the fact that they've got this overset. You can just click and get to that area. That is so nice because one of the biggest pet peeves I have on Kickstarter pages in general is, and I'm I'm not sure if this is what's going to happen, so we'll see in a second. I can't tell what the game is about and you're only showing me components for the first 50 to 60% of the, the page until you finally get down that far past the, the pictures of the components and the stretch goals and the quotes and all of that stuff until you get to the, actually the meat of what the game is. Because then I don't feel like you're selling me on the game, you're selling me on the pieces of the game. Which worries me that you're putting more emphasis on the pieces of the game rather than the actual gameplay content. So let's take a look at these quotes. This is kind of what I dreamed like it would be. It's crazy good and it's going to be insanely fun. Okay. This is a space game unlike anything I've ever played. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. I love this game. I'm 100% adding to my collection. I'm aiming to become the... It's aiming to become... So the, 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 the first and the third quotes I'm okay with. The second and the fourth quotes tell me more about what they don't say rather than what they do say. You know, at least at least Alex from Board Game Co. says, you know, I'm backing this, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, he puts his money where his mouth is. I love that about him. You know, he'll flat out tell you that. These other two quotes from Tom and Rolling Solo, they're chosen for a reason because I don't hear them saying, I'm going to back this, I'm going to support this with my money. I, I, I They tell you, this is what it wants to be. This is what it could be. Well, that's also not really giving me your opinion either. That's just putting a generic sort of quote out there. So I, I wish, and, and and not having seen either of these videos where these guys talk about it, or if this is just cherry picked um, to get the most quotable quote on your front page. I, I don't like seeing quotes like this on a page. It's a little bit of a turnoff. It a little bit irks me nowadays because you can get anyone to say something positive about almost any game. So a positive comment it doesn't really mean anything. And but that's but that's why I like this. It's crazy good. It's not very specific, but it tells you that they really liked it and they they really think a lot of it. And same thing with this. You know, I'm 100% adding it to my collection. Okay. You know, there's not a whole lot of amb ambiguity there. So let's see. Okay, so we've got we, we've got this language editions being talked about. Okay, so they talk about, you know, what they're doing here all of this experience and you know it's a co-op one to four player game you're going to be asymmetric sections why back it now get it at a better price get it first okay get it at a better price i'm all for because that has been the trend of awakened realm stuff they throw a bunch of stuff in so you're getting your money's worth get it first don't care about that so i like i like the fact that you have your pledges up here at the same time you've already sort of hitting me with it on the side so um having it this high up on the page is a little bit weird um, stretch goals, a new stretch goal box every two days with a new update. We want to create these stretch goals with the community. Okay. So we have a new scenario. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. I think this was, what is this campaign? Okay. Um, it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. Okay. Got a new model day three Tartarus scenario again. So four more pages. So what's this have four more, two more pages, uh, new logs, new setup rules, new stuff. Uh, day five, you get a character expansion, a unique story, uh, that's spelled wrong. Uh, for every crew member, uh, Cryptobiosis, another two pages with some more stuff. Uh, you got some turret stuff, some miniatures that are going with the close encounters, whatever that is. Um, and then you have the Lost Fleet campaign. So a standalone free stretch goal campaign that takes place decades later. So is this their take on like the Tainted ground Grail thing where they all of a sudden fast forward or they all of a sudden go prequel? Three, three new, uh, much newer Earth starships mysteriously gone. 
Uh, ISS Vanguard has to find them. Um, new Planetopia, so basically a whole new campaign, a whole new enemies, uh, new dice, uh, new skills and abilities. Okay, great. And so next stretch goal is the Lost Fleet. So we're going to see something else with the Lost Fleet there. And so we've got pieces of that, and it kind of goes into these, these daily updates to give you more information. Now you've got your add-ons, your Galactic Almanac. I'm assuming that's a, sort of an art book. Um, let's take a look here at what they say. Art book, yep, best art. I mean, I, I'm all for beautiful art. I love beautiful art, but it's I have no purpose for it. And so even a $20 is, I mean, that's shipping. That's the difference between a Wave 1 and a Wave 2 shipping. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a pass unless you're a completionist. Um, Court. Now, I think this was just announced because I feel like the last update that came in my inbox today announced something about the the um, pre-painting of the sun drop technique. Now, this is where, you know, it sort of is hit or miss. Uh, $11 is a, is a really good price, but it's the it's the time versus the money. If you have the time and you, the skill to paint these, you're better off doing that. Uh, now, that being said, this is their probably fifth, sixth, seventh campaign where they're doing some sort of uh, shading. And they've obviously gotten better and they've improved it along the way. And $11 for the whole core box is actually pretty good. I don't know how many miniatures there are in the core box, though. So I'm not sure what, how many uh, that's going to be sort of a value. But $11, $11, that's pretty cheap. And this is the Commander's Pledge Sun Drop is 59 So clearly there is a lot more in the Commander's Pledge than there is in just the core box uh, for a $48 increase. Gameplay expansions, the personnel files. So this was a gameplay expansion adding more character depth to all of the 90. So um, I feel like this is something that I would rather have as a stretch goal than an add-on. I'm curious to see um, the rationale and the explanation behind why they went with this as a uh, add-on as opposed to just including it as sort of a, a variant difficulty to begin with. So um, hopefully they have more explanation in the updates there. Uh, so here's your here's your basic core box pledge. Um, uh, like I said, it, you're, you're not going to lose money on probably the core box with these sort of games. You're getting so much, including the stretch goals and the extra expansions that we already saw above, that for $99, even if the shipping ends up being 30 bucks, it's probably going to save you money because Nemesis, the core box alone without anything else, is more than it was at retail. Uh, at retail is more than what it was um, during the campaign period. And so uh, you won't, will not lose money if you just get the core on any of Awakened Realms' campaigns. The question, and I think this goes to the core of the core, but everything else is Awakened Realms as a whole. Shut Up and Sit Down Quinns did a, did a, did a review recently of Etherfield. And my main concern with I, ISS Vanguard is that Awakened Realms has shown us they can do big. I mean, this is massive. This is tons of stuff. But I think Quinn's raises a good point in can they do tight? Can they do smaller? Can they pull the reins in, pull the focus in? And honestly, I don't know what the answer to that is. Sometimes less is more. Do these guys have the ability to do less and make it more? Do we need five expansions? Do we need 70 different characters? We all with three different layers of personality or whatever, it, you know, you know what I'm saying? And I, the answer is, I don't know. I don't know the details and the depth of each of these, but I worry about it being too much. We, we comment and we criticize uh, Simon, for example, of putting all these expansions in that aren't play tested well and balanced well. Well, why are we focusing on Simon when we have essentially the same thing here? It's just in a little bit prettier shinier box with a little bit better bow on top because it's not any cheaper so i think we have to level that criticism at awakened realms too or at least not that criticism but that critique and that concern going forward too much of a good thing is a true statement in some cases and that is the concern going forward with awakened realms are they going to bloat this up so that it becomes more unfocused less oriented in terms of what they're actually trying to accomplish? And is it going to take away rather than add to what they're trying to do in the first place? I don't know. Here's your ship book. This is another controversial thing. You're going to be having a binder for quick saving your campaign. Frankly speaking, I like the idea of it. 
if you I think of Apocrypha, which the, the failure that that was in the sense of when it actually got to backers and how to play it and how to store it. And and I wish it would have had something like this because it talks about setting up the nine cards with the center and all the ones around it. Well, this is allowing you to do that. The only question is, is it going to be too nitpicky in terms of flipping back and forth? And, you know, especially when you're in the ship and you're going to the various phases and the various sections. I don't know. Because there is a lot of upkeep, I think, that's going to go along with this in terms of how much stuff you're having to keep track of in all the different phases and all the different planets and all the different places. I mean, you can see just from first glance on some of the playthrough videos from Board Game Co. and Quackalope that there is a lot of table space stuff going on. And so, again, this makes me wonder if this is really going to be a game that is more well-suited for one to two players, even though they say you're doing four asymmetric factions within the ship. That's, that was my biggest concern with Tainted Gra Grail. It's my biggest concern with Frostpunk. You know, a lot of these games that they say are truly multiplayer that really, in the practicality, do not work out nearly as well as that. And is this going to fit that trope or is it going to break away from it and break away from the mold and create something new? Something more like Pandemic, something more like that sort of co-op where you truly have to each do your own individual role and you can do two-handed, but it's going to be a lot better experience and a lot more fun if you have four people. I mean, I can two-hand uh, Pandemic Iberia with my wife and we can just play two characters and but it's a lot of, it's a little bit more work and it's just more fun with four people. I mean, that's just let's just get to the bottom of it. It's a lot more fun. I would make an argument that I would think a lot of people would disagree with the fact that uh playing Tainted Grail or Seventh Continent with four people is a lot more fun than playing with two people. And that's what worries me about this game. So you have your ship book. They talk about all the different areas of the ship. Um, your sections, so you've got your engineering, your recon, your security, and your science people. You've got the dice, and I think the latest update was talking something about the fact that, or no, I believe that I saw this on the Facebook group when I was uh, scanning Facebook earlier today, that they were talking about what they're going to have to do with dice, and because they've got custom sides, and the ones they sent out in the prototypes, it would cost $200, and so I guess make good dice. That is the other thing. There, if you do not like this game, I, I will already say, not knowing how much dice rolling is going to into it, I've heard various interpretations of how heavy this is going to be. You know, a deck builder, how much do you want to shuffle the deck and draw cards from the deck versus, uh, you know, a deck roller, if you will, uh, where you're just rolling for those things instead. How big of a difference does that make to people? But I feel the feeling, if you don't like the uh, chaos and the RNG, uh, or the randomness of dice rolling, you're probably going to want to stay away. And I think uh, when this was first launched, you got a lot of people that said, you know what, I do not like dice. And the important thing here is that you know what you don't like and you don't like. It's not whether or not this is for you. It's you know yourself. Because this is another game that I feel like there's probably enough information, hopefully by the end of this campaign, that it should be relatively clear either this is for you or it's not. Not one of these games where, you know, I wonder if I'll like this. I think I'll back it and see what happens. And I can always resell it. We're getting away from that on crowdfunding in general nowadays. And I think that, relativistically speaking, is a good thing. I think the concern is that these dice are so similar um, that being able to tell one from the other, if you are given the choice of one of these, how easy is it going to be to do on a turn-by-turn -turn basis without having to sit there and study all of the various sides of the die? Like, oh, okay, this one has... Oh, this one must be the basic red. Oh, oh no, this one is the expert. Oh, and this one's the wild? Uh, oh, how do I tell the wild between the basic? I gotta count the sides. I don't want to be counting sides to figure out this. So they have to have some way of marking those or telling them apart. Um, otherwise, I think you're going to run into just a lot of frustration. You have the journey, the planetopia, planetopedia, um, uh, storyline experience and replayability. You know, that being said... You know, that's been the biggest plus side of all of these games, is what I've heard, is the storyline is relatively good. It's better than a lot of the other campaign games out there. So say what you will about that. I haven't played them all, but that's just been what I've heard secondhand. So I think this is less of a worry for me, uh, you know, in terms of the scripting and the replayability. They've already said that you can go back to planets and get a different script than what happened previously, different events. So and you, there's already variability there. A companion app. So hopefully the companion app as well limits some of the 
bookkeeping that you're having to do. It takes some of the ease out of it, sort of like the Gloomhaven app has done for Gloomhaven. It's not to replace it, but it's to make the ease of getting it to the table and getting it back out that much better and that much less of a hassle. Cards, I mean, you know the artwork is going to be great. Um, you know, I worry about translation issues when you're doing five languages. Um, that's my biggest concern. Threats, assets, I am perfectly okay with the standees. I am a big fan of standees. Um, make a good insert so that it all fits, please. Just do that. Uh, the Close Encounters, this is the uh, unlocked stretch goals. You're getting the miniatures. Uh, uh, so let's take a look here. Let's make sure I'm not messing this up. Uh, Commander's Pledge, sorry. The Commander's Pledge, the Close Encounters Miniatures Expansion. So it turns the 32 standees, uh, tokens into beautifully crafted miniatures. I mean, yeah, these are freaking fantastic. Um, that's, again, never been an issue. Their miniatures are great. And this is why the 49, it looks like there's going to add a couple, $49, $48 is going to be the difference in terms of getting these sun dropped. I'm not really a fan of these. These look kind of ugly, to be frank. I like the drones. Uh, again, I think those are ugly. I think those are ugly. Uh, the landers, it is what it is. Um, you, you take the lander down to the planet. And so obviously, hopefully the different landers have different abilities, different um, uh, ways of exploring, I guess. And then you have your mission equipment. So again, we are probably 60% um, down the page before we get to a video. Take that or, or for what you will, as I have critiqued at the top of when we're actually getting to it. And this, everything you need to know, I, I looked at this. It basically just, he just has a very good narrative overview without telling you a whole lot about the game, but it's beautifully crafted and it gives you just a general sense of what the game is about without telling you too much. And then you get into the playthroughs, you have um, Dice Towers, Ant Labs, I mean, you, uh, Man vs. Meeples, uh, Final Thoughts, I believe. And that's the problem with some of this paid promotion is, is, and I feel like I would probably be the same way, but since I'm not doing it, I feel like it needs to be said too that if you're the paid promotion and the one great reason I like Board Game Co was you know he's putting his opinion out there and you know I'm adding this to my collection he he's buying it he's he is one of us in that sense that he is putting his money out there as a backer not just as someone who's getting a prototype and maybe getting a review copy in the end who doesn't have to worry about whether or not his money is going to be lost or not or if he's going to have to try and resell it it's his business but anyway um so I like that and. I, I like this. And so I, I like this. I like this cool. I recommend it for solo players, which again speaks to the fact that you are going to be playing multi-handed and it may work better in that regard as a one to two player game. But again, I recommend, but it doesn't say, am I going to back it myself? And I don't know if that's just, again, clipped out or if that's just not included. I would love to just see them put that out there. So you've got the intro story, uh, print and play components. Um, you know, this is this is a big positive right here. I'll say this right now. Paul Grogan doing a rule book, not only a video, but a rule book. I just saw this on Reddit. People saying, why can't these game companies put out a good rule book? Honestly, there's no excuse. So the fact that you're finally, finally doing this on your 12th, in theory, your 12th campaign. One, it makes me very pleased. Two, it, it, a little displeased because it took this long. So I like seeing it though. And the fact that hopefully it extends further than just the rules. So if he goes, hey guys, this doesn't make a lot of sense or it doesn't make a lot of sense from a gameplay standpoint when I'm trying to figure it out from the rules, maybe that allows them to tighten up the actual gameplay. I don't know. That would be my hope is that he gives feedback not on just the sentence structure and the syntax, but also on the actual gameplay. But I don't know if that's, I'm not sure if that's if that's what this is. It doesn't really say that. So again, we are three quarters of the way down the page before you actually get to what you're going to be doing. And so again, you're leading your section. You're going to have characters. You're going to develop them. You're going to level them up. You're going to recruit them. And, you know, it talks about it. One to two hour sessions, um, explorable planets, how many missions you want to do. You can save it. Um, you're going to have to, you know, figure out how, what you want to do on that mission, whether it's successful is going to then affect when you come back up to the ship and the consequences. It, it's got those elements of exploration and um, differentiation that I want to see on a Kickstarter campaign nowadays. So it's not just because it's a big name. It's because they're doing something different. 
that's part of the reason they're getting the funding. Part is the name recognition, part is the branding as well, but they are not doing, and this is where I give Awaken Realms a lot of credit, they are not sticking to, you know what, we're just going to retheme Nemesis. You know what, we're just going to retheme Lords of Hellas and just slap a new title on it and a few tweaks and call it something else, or make, make a 2.0 version of Lords of Hellas and leave it at that. So I give them a lot of credit. You know, you high, you you fly high, and you want to hit hit the you know peaks, but you also risk flying too high and too close to the sun, and getting burned and falling in the ocean, a la Icarus. Talking about their pedigree, talking about people, talking about shipping goes into the split shipping. So you know, split shipping, you're getting the single wave. So single wave, so you're getting everything at once, April 2022. So a year and a half away. Okay, that's about what I would expect to be frank. Split wave shipping, August 2021 and August 2022, or April 2022. And for the core pledge alone, it's going to cost you 40 bucks. And for the commander's pledge, it's going to be... So that's actually not too big of a difference. It will be getting the commander's pledge with the core pledge there. And for the one wave shipping, it's 24 and 28. That's not as big a difference as I would have thought. Now, I think the other concern is that how accurate are these going to be come a year and a half out? And is that going to change? Because you've already said that the shipping costs from the container on Nemesis Lockdown, which just came out uh, for an update earlier this week, have jacked way up. And so has this changed based on that at all? And I have to think, especially the closer we are to the end of the COVID era that we're in, it's still going to remain relatively high. So I could see this first wave being higher than $38. So that would be a concern of mine as well. But that's something that's sort of outside of their realm to predict. But I think if you're backing one of these pledges, you have to be willing and the knowledge that you may be paying 150% of the price that's listed in here. If the make it or break it is 15 or 20 bucks on shipping, you probably shouldn't be backing this in the first place at this point because it's probably not a sound investment. It's my own two cents anyway. So that's it. That is the page. So here we are looking at the updates and, and I'm going to try and go through these quickly. I'm not sure how much text is on everyone so i'll try not to read it along with me or i'll edit a little bit of this out so that you can you know have a little bit more of abbreviated version especially if you've already looked at these updates so let's just start from the beginning we have here epic day one you get the lone wolf uh it's the first stretch goal the lone wolf campaign character pack three minutes i at least at least they've got a little bit of uh they can poke fun at themselves here you know fastest funded ever on game found so they understand a little bit of that. It's not total in seriousness there. They say they've been working on it for a long time. So, I mean, that's why I'd hope to see a lot more of this put together. Um, and that also raises the concern, if you've been working on it this long, why are we still a year and a half out? Now, some of that is purely production, and I understand that. And some of it is you need funds. But also, it makes me concerned that you're still that far out. And I, I, I always wish crowdfunding campaigns came, especially from the bigger companies, came with a little bit more stuff done into the actual crowdfunding campaign when we know that realistically some of this at least in part is going to be uh pre-order it, it not in the same sense that retail is but in the sense that the crowdfunding has become more of in general okay we talked about that up giving updates every two days hyperactive in the comments it'd be just be, be nice um core box overview so uh, one to four players, highlights of the game. So they talk about multiple endings, 20 or 30 hours, plus 20 hours of side content, 30 systems, 20 planets, uh, the ship book, app, cards, cards, tokens, uh, dice, all that stuff. Close encounters, add-ons. So they talk about here, it looks like the add-ons. I mean, it's just, this is the miniature pack, but there's three differences, uh, larger, more different. It's only going to grow bigger. So they've, they, they're not putting it all out there to begin with. And then um, can be joined together to create larger constructions. So uh, the more I see of it, honestly, uh, with the price point difference, I don't think it's really worth it for me. And I know uh, other people have commented in some of the comment section, as well as on Facebook, that they want it just because, one, it looks beautiful, but then also the resaleability is there because of the availability post-campaign is not often the greatest. So you can make a little money on it. But again, I, that's... I have stopped backing things that way. Um, so as much as I'm tempted to do that, I will probably not do that um, if I continue with my pledge at the end. Now let's get to the stretch goal, Vanguard operations. So 
Um, this is basically how if you want to introduce the game to new people or you don't want to get the whole campaign going, it's like a single session, two to three hour playthrough on a planet board. But you can also take it as a separate um, side mission on the actual campaign. So I like that. Um, I think too many of these campaign games like Tainted Grail or The Seventh Continent, it's not easy to do that with someone who is brand new to it or someone you just want to get you know, their feet wet into it. Um, I can't do that with some of my other campaign games nearly as easily, like the one-shots. Some are designed to be one-shots, and frankly speaking, some don't work well as one-shots. So I like the fact that they're doing this. I just worry that, again, with some other games that have co-op, the competitive, uh, solo, you know, all of those different gameplays... It does it would it be better if they just focused on one instead so that would be my concern is how different does the one shot make it and how is it going to be integrated and is it going to be fluid or is it going to be too different and you're going to have to put too much focus on that and it's going to take away from the campaign which ultimately speaking is the much more important thing and if you if you say one or the other i would rather have a better campaign and no getting my feet wet side mission solo things to introduce to people to the game in the first place. My own personal opinion. Story intro, uh, you know, um, overview. Um, first operation means a single character experience. Um, solo players usually control two, but the lone, so basically you can play as this offers a solo option for, for people with this character. So new stretch goal with a new standee and talking about some models and some highlights. Um, and uh, other stretch goal, variety, you're getting more characters. So voting for a new character, great. Okay, so that is the first update. Update number two, ship book, final vote. Uh, you're getting uh, just a quick update. You're getting the ship book, a lot of strategic decisions, they say, streamlining the rules. This is probably the most important thing. If you're streamlining the rules, that is what's going to make or break a game like this, is how nitpicky, how minutia are the rules or is it going to be able to streamline things so you can get through this element, this phase of the game and the campaign and the rounds faster so you can get back to the more interesting parts? And I'm not saying this isn't interesting, but I think that's where the potential lag is, especially if you have all members involved in the decisions here. Like it says, it could lead to some analysis paralysis, which then leads to more downtime, which needs to lag, which means people are going, what are we doing here? Can we... Can we move on? Can we, what, what's the next thing? Completely new mechanics. Again, this is legacy-esque. It's dangerous. It's dangerous ground. If you're going to be adding stuff as you go through, uh, it's either going to be very hit or miss. My favorite example of things that do this so far is just, you know, keeping it real simple. Uh, Zombie Kids Evolution does a great job of just simple stuff, slightly more complex, but it gives, even the slight gives a lot of depth to it. So hopefully, again, this is my big concern about Waken Realms. Can they do less with more? You can still do things like this, adding new mechanics, but you don't need to add a huge thing. Make it small, but make it impactful. Then they talk about the binder here. Um, the longer the campaign goes, the more game state there is to save. So you're worried about how easy is it going to be to get back into uh, the game itself. And uh, they basically say that this in their testing is the best option that they had. And frankly speaking, I would agree with them. With the amount of cards and the amount of manipulation that it looks like that you have to do in this game, I don't see another better way to do it because I personally don't like the way Seventh Continent uh, does it with the, the cards in the boxes and digging through and then trying to sort them back into. And then just, I do not like that. So I actually don't mind this. I actually think the binder is a, a step back in terms of a positive where less is more. So I think that makes me encouraged. Reduce some unnecessary roles. I mean, so it sounds like they're taking some criticism already within these comments and within the, some of the concerns uh, based off of some of the videos that are out there, simplifying it without detracting from the usefulness, involving and single section, reduce unnecessary roles or unnecessary slotting and unslotting. I mean, that's a time issue. That's an efficiency issue. That's making your game more streamlined, which makes more people want to play it. That's a good thing. So that's pretty much it, it looks like. And then they talk about another specimen vote on this update. Update number three, Tartarus. What is Tartarus? New stretch goal, Tartarus scenario. Uh, take part in the campaign. Tense mission, several twists and turns. Uh, provide a welcome relief from visiting planets by offering one, not but two boards that work and look in slightly different ways. 
so it's just included as a stretch goal. Um, and basically, it's just showing you sort of a branching storyline or uh, consequences that can happen depending on how you interact with things on the planet. Uh, and it will then tell you what to do and how it sort of branches or not. So again, what you want to see in this. Uh, again, community vote. I like that they do the community vote. Again, it's it's nice. At the same time, it also can delay projects depending on how well it fits in with what they were expecting. But I have to think that even the fact you're offering options means you've already got several steps down the line further planned on all of these, which is a blessing or a curse. Because if at the same time, if you're spending that much time coming up with stuff that you're never going to use, it is what it is. And then uh, character expansion. So they're teasing the character expansion in the next update. So let's see. Day five, stretch goal, character expansion, and personnel files add-on. So unique, again, unique, spelled wrong. Um, uh, so we have new stretch goal variety pack, uh, two, three, and four. So you're getting uh, 10 more. So you're getting uh, not 10, but 30 each. So it brings the total crew members to 90 uh, each section twice. So that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, hopefully again, these are more than just nuanced things. One of the biggest criticisms I have on games with too many characters is they're all just minor variations and there's not a real differentiation between characters. And so I'd rather have half of this, that there are real tangible differences between characters rather than just a sheer number where one number is slightly tweaked, where this guy rolls two of these and this guy rolls three of these. Come on. I, I, Give me something more unique than that. I'd rather have less. Less is more, as I mentioned several times now. Uh, unique story for each crew member. Uh, they also get more interesting with the next stretch goal. Um, the art, okay. Stretch goal character expansion. Uh, comes free with everybody who owns the game. Unique background information. So some of the bios. So it, does this actually add any gameplay or is it just to flesh these characters out a little bit? So it sounds like they're just going to flush them out a little bit. Okay, that doesn't do much for me. That's okay. New add-on. How to get you to know your crew. Optional add-ons with biographies, even more. A veteran rank that works different than the game's standard three-rank system. At the start of the mission, they get a rank-up card that gets a personal goal and the number of success tokens the team needs to get in order to gather the new rank. Eventually, they get to rank three. It's at least five landings successfully, and then they have to rest, and, you know, so it's going to take a while. And that's only if you rank up, no injuries, and so middle of the campaign, they're saying. So this option allows you to take, uh, you know, uh, past rank three, essentially, to their veteran state, where they completed their own personal journey. Uh, once you solve it, a short scene, and you flip the card over, a slightly altered version of the crew. Updated art, upgraded ability, one more dice conversion, and a veteran star. So here's the base game, Scout uh, 2 there, and then spend one charge, in risk roll, treat blank as blank. And the veteran card, she's now a three. Spend one charge. After this roll, refresh all dice. I'm assuming that means re-roll all dice with a blank result. And she's got a little bit different um, thing right here too. How big of a deal is that? Not having seen some of the gameplay yet at this point in this video, uh, I can't speak to that. So once I get to the point later in this video about the actual gameplay, we can maybe speak about the veteran ranking well, as well as how maybe important that is or how added or necessary that is to give more depth in terms of the character development. So I can't speak much to that yet at this point. Um, you can add it. It's, you know, what would they say, like 20 bucks or so? Um, then creature. Okay, there you go. Update number five. Let's get to update number five here. New app, uh, new choose your own operation. Again, app is nice if it streamlines it even further. It allows you to save easier as well. I'm all for, but I also don't want my resources being spent developing on this when they could be developing the actual gameplay to make the game better itself. Um, a, a good app with a not great game does not make a game better. It does not make a good game in the first place. I want a good game with a superfluous app that is not necessary but is helpful and nice on top of things. The frosting on the cake. But I want a good cake regardless. If the cake is burnt and dry, it doesn't matter how good the frosting is. That's what I worry about with apps. Choose your own operations. Um, they're going to let you pick uh, the theme for an entire operation. So Eternal Sunrise, Negotiators, Deadly Memento. So those are the three. Uh, so we'll see probably in the next update which one got picked. Uh, map divided, sunline, sundown line between dark and bright half. Um, negotiators, so alien warships, unreckonable messages, uh, uh, ship violated strict protocols. You got to repay a debt for going in the space. 
So you're going to be negotiating stuff and a deadly memento. Strange object is hovering uh, between twin stars and you got to figure out what to, they're walking in a bomb of a galactic scale. The device comes to life and we'll turn them both into supernova. So I know just <laughs> based on my brief synopsis, which one I want, number three. So let's see what everyone else chose. Uh, update number six, Cryptobiosis Stretch Goal Spotlight. Uh, so extra model for the Close Encounter set. Okay, that's great. Uh, modular turret, planetary vote results, upcoming major stretch goal. So let's see, exciting operation. So it's another operation. It's another stretch goal with another operation booklet and two more pages in the planet book. A uh, couple, you know, all the cards that go along with it. Uh, got the, the, the modules and the, so let's see what we got here. Let's see what, uh, Mossy Inferno concept. Uh, okay, so there we go. Uh, alien world that you most like to visit. So this is the previous one that I sort of sipped over. Uh, that looks kind of cool. Uh, the arts, I mean, the art's fantastic. There's no doubt about that. Uh, stretch goals, they talk about that. And so they just kind of re, uh, let everyone know what they're getting again. And here we go. They tease the lost fleet, the one that we saw on the main page. Uh, so we'll see a little bit more what about what that is about here on update seven. The lost fleet comes into port. The Lost Fleet campaign. So it's basically the free campaign you're getting, a full-size stretch goal campaign. So this is why, I, as I said earlier in the video, that the core pledge that you're going to be getting this expansion with is always going to be worth it because it will resell even if this game is not to your liking. Uh, the core pledge is a very safe because you you know that the combination of the expansion and the core is going to be more than just what the core pledge is here, even with shipping. So uh, it's wave two. Oh. That's not very great. Um, never liked seeing that, uh, which is like with most stretch goals. Again, uh, I'd rather... That's why I have been a single wave shipping in the past person. So lots to present. So we designed into three separate sections. Okay, so yep, Lost Fleet, 50 years. So this is what I said on the front page, three uh, new starships, but they disappear. And then you got to go find them is what it sounds like. Um, yeah, so it's been refurbished and now you got to go out and find them and see what happens. So. Um, Honestly, that, that's exciting. But I, again, I mean, there's got to be new gameplay elements and they talk about it, but um, hopefully they tie a little bit more into that um, in the upcoming um, updates because I don't see a whole lot of explanation here in, you know, wh why jump 50 years and why use, why not give us an upgraded Vanguard? You know, why not give us one of those new ships instead? So uh, what is the purpose of that? Why that instead of the other? So let's see. Um, yep. Okay. We talked about that. We talked about that's just breaking down the components. Eternal Sunrise. Wow. Okay. So I wanted the memento and they wanted the sunrise. Uh, apparently <laughs> my taste is different than other people's. So let's go. Uh, Lost Fleet number two. Uh, Lost Fleet part two. Um, so what's in wave one? What's in wave two? So we talked about that. You're getting almost all the stretch goals in wave two, basically is what they've said. Personnel files. They're talking about wave one, but maybe wave two as well. Lost Fleet New Threats, uh, furthest place on the map, fascinating alien creatures. So that's why you're getting four new bad guys. Okay, so here you go. Uh, military race, creature carrying a sack, it's carrying something, that's weird. And anything that's something uh, different, and that's completely part of what the Lost Fleet is about. Uh, tense battle scenes, tense confrontations. Okay, there you go. So some of those models I uh, mentioned on the first page, some of them I like, some of them I don't. Uh, it is what it is. And new dice. So, interesting. Okay. New skills, abilities. There you go. That's, again, the summary of the content there. And update number nine. Sun drop. Here we go. Sun drop. Again, for the core, 11. And for everything, 49 or $59. So, again, it's, you know, it's a very good deal for the, the core box in that sense. And they say that you can just use it as a second primer. And you can just use it as the primer and still paint over it, which is an improvement from some of their previous projects where that wasn't always exactly the easiest thing to do. So, and it comes with uh, the pledges. So no delay, you're not getting uh, your delayed pledge uh, like you were sometimes in the past where if you got it with or without it, changed the time frame. So, okay. So that is, uh, at the time of this video, that is all the updates that are out. So we'll see where this goes. Now let's talk about the gameplay based on the videos that's out already.